coming to you from Orange County, California. This is the Jug Life Podcast with Max Ada and Chad Wesley Smith. Yeah, you know, it maybe isn't going to take quite as much work, and, and maybe it's a predisposition to one success in one area or the other. But And how hard is it to maintain you know, yeah. that high-level performance once you have achieved it? Not that hard, right? Maintenance volume and stuff is really not too bad. And so that becomes like this really, when you think about it in terms of like, okay, we can talk about MRVs and stuff, but really it's like most people don't even get remotely close to their MRV. So then it's really about how much time and energy are you going to really put forth in deviating into your all, all your training stuff. And it gets really confusing where you're like, okay, well, I have skills, I have tactics, I have visualization training I could be doing. I have body comp stuff that I could be doing. Should I just get more muscular? Should I get leaner? Should I get stronger? Where do you allocate your time? And that's where like having a really good needs analysis comes in handy. And we're lucky to live in an age where I was, you know, I was watching um, Pro Fighters League on ESPN. The whole time, just blasting with stats I had never Mm. seen before. They have like a stat cage thing where they have all these different little stats that they're running at any given time. And although like to the the casual watcher, they probably just be like, what is all this fucking shit? I don't care, right? But for me, I was like, that's really interesting because you can look at all that stuff and you can compare people who are in like the top 10 and you say, how many strikes do they throw per minute? How many takedowns do they defend? How many submission attempts do they make, right, in MMA? And that's something that's quantifiable. And you can say, hey, you know, typically you do really well on your jujitsu game. You might not have to spend a lot of time trying to get to that next tier, which might take, uh, you know, moving mountains to get there. But you really suck against the cage in the clinch, right? And that's something that might not take very much time and effort, but gets a huge payout in terms of your winning potential. Yeah, and the, the, those kind of, I guess, advanced analytics are you know, what announcers and stuff are calling those and general managers have become so prevalent in baseball and, and uh, basketball particularly. Less so in football, but I think it's, it's coming up more. And MMA is probably a bit young in, in their data very set early, of yeah. that to really be able to tell like this is what matters. This is what makes you successful, uh, and and that's why in, in basketball, particularly where it's been this like analytics revolution, they have that Sloan Analytics Conference at, at MIT, and you get you guys like Daryl Morey, the uh, the Rockets general manager, who you know, kind of famously said like, well, three will always be more than two, you know, so they just take threes. They they shoot threes and they shoot layups and they don't give a shit about anything in between because that's what the analytics told them. So maybe you know, down the road with, with MMA, it's going to be like they're, they're going to know from dynamic correspondence and all that kind of stuff, like this is what makes you win. You know, leg, leg kicks and, and you know, body shots are, are so much more indicative of, a, of winning performance than you know, takedowns and yeah. ankle locks or whatever it's going to be. They've done some of that, which is, and you're going to laugh at this, but they've looked at like what are some of the most common ways when somebody gets a submission win, what are the submissions that typically work? Right? Yeah. And it's like RNCs, rear naked chokes. And then they looked at which ones like are really low scoring ones. And it was like the omoplata, like I don't think it's ever, I think there's maybe one in UFC history. And then yeah. there's like one or two in like some uh, other professional organizations and a handful in amateurs. But it's like, okay, so you have this like really complicated technique. Are you going to spend a lot of time working on it, knowing that it's probably not going to contribute a ton yeah. to your success. And stuff like that will come up all the time. And I think that's really interesting as like sports science people where we say, why on earth would you allocate so much time to do like a fucking Ryu Estestesterican kick, right? <laughs> when you could just get better at wrestling or you could any, what pick your sport, whatever it is. But like, look, that's the idea. Yeah. That's a clip from episode number 141, Dr. James Hoffman on integrated periodization for sport. Check out the full episode and make sure to subscribe to the Jug Life Podcast.